Hello everybody, today I'm going to show you how I removed and rebuilt the raw water pump on my Volvo 5.0 GXI. You can tell you need to replace the water pump if you see this type of tracking in the bilge of your boat. This is a crankshaft mounted pump located on the harmonic balancer at the bottom of the engine. To remove the pump we first need to loosen the belt tensioner and remove the hoses with a couple of hose clamps here and a screwdriver and then remove the bracket that holds the water pump in place by removing these two bolts. So here we are with the hoses removed. Now we're removing the bracket. You'll need a long extension to get to this one. To loosen the tension on your serpentine belt, insert the end of a 3 inch ratchet wrench into the slot provided and rotate and you'll see that the belt loosens. Next you'll need a 5 16 internal hex to remove the bolts on the water pump and then the water pump comes out. To rebuild the pump, I bought this kit available on Amazon for about $65. It contains all the parts you need including a new impeller, bearing, bearing seal bolts, and an o-ring. The first step is to loosen the four bolts that hold the pump housing to the bearing housing. Next, remove the impeller by just using a screwdriver. Be careful not to mar the inside. This impeller has about uh, 80 hours on it, and you can see it's well overdue for replacement. To remove the bearing housing, I use this bearing puller. I found out that it worked better if I mounted the pulley to a piece of wood bolted in place with a couple of lag bolts to keep it from rotating. And there is a removed bearing housing. The next step is to remove the snap ring so we can get to the bearing. The next step is to remove the seal by first removing the wire spring that retains it in place. And then the seal can simply be removed by prying up with a screwdriver. To remove the bearing, the best tool is to use a blind bearing removal tool, but I didn't have that, so I fashioned this out of a piece of scrap metal. This will allow us to use a socket and a hammer to extract the bearing. I got this idea from another person on YouTube who also did this repair. The tool fits around the edges of the bearing, which will allow you to clamp it in a vise and then pound it out with a socket. You'll see that the bearing will start coming out of the housing. We still have a little ways to go before we can remove it by hand. After a few more attempts, the bearing frees itself up. You can see here that our seal has leaked, causing water to get in and cause rust and corrosion on the bearing. So this will definitely need to be replaced. To replace the bearing, first clean the inside of the housing. I used some fine emery paper to get rid of all the rust and corrosion. Don't remove too much material, otherwise your bearing won't seal properly. Next, install the seal with the uh, groove side up. You can simply press in with your fingers and it fits in really nicely. Next, we'll need to put some of this bearing and shaft retainer on the outside of the bearing before we insert it into the housing. To insert it in the housing, I first used a ball peen hammer just to tap it in to get it started. And then I used a piece of pipe to fit over the bearing to hammer it into this all the way. You can tell it's all the way in when the retainer ring groove is exposed. 
Next, install the retainer ring. Now we need to mount the bearing assembly on the, on the shaft. So the first thing is to clean that surface up so that it's clean and again apply some more retainer liquid onto the ID of the bearing before pressing onto the housing. To press it on I used another large socket with a hammer and pounded it on until it, it's seated. We will prepare the pump housing by cleaning it with emery paper to remove any debris. Next, soak the impeller into a soapy water solution to allow ease of assembly. Insert the impeller into the housing by pressing and rotating while bending the veins to allow them to fit in. Clean the groove and install the new o-ring. Next we will install the pump housing onto the bearing housing. It will only go on one way, so just rotate it until the holes line up. Next, apply some anti-seize compound to the four screws. Insert the four screws and tighten in a crisscross pattern. I could not find torque specs for these screws, so if anybody out there knows of what that is, let me know. I just tightened them up until they were snug. We will now install the pump back on the boat by first uh, coating all the bolts with anti-seize. Also clean the surface on the front where the pump mounts. Mount the pump and secure with the four 5 16 inch hex bolts. I'd reattach the belt by lifting up on the belt tensioner and sliding the belt over the pulley. We can now attach the bracket that holds the pump in place. And finally, to aid the pump in its startup, uh, add a few ounces of soapy water to each of the hoses. and then install the hoses. The installation is all complete, so we can start and run the motor and check for leaks. This motor has been running for about 10 minutes, and it looks like we've had a successful repair job here, and there are no leaks. Good luck to all of you. I hope this helps. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me.